Hello and welcome to your daily dose of commentary. Today we start with the topic. I caused MatPat of the Game Theorist to quit YouTube. So I got sent this 886 million times. Number one trending video on all of YouTube with one day getting 11 million views. Goodbye internet from the Game Theorist. When MatPat is like, yo, I'm retiring. I think he said he'll still have some small input or like guest appearances and stuff, but he won't be like the main voice of the channel anymore. Mentioning that if you look at like the writing credits for each episode, it's often like a, a lot of someone else doing the writing. And while he still has creative control, it's not total creative control. Like he isn't personally writing every episode as he uh, may have once in the past. And, and so he's moving on. And he says it was in part inspired by Tom Scott. And we talked about him also taking a step back from things. Like, it's unlikely that either is going to disappear entirely from the internet, but they're obviously not going to be as front-facing as they uh, have been up to this point. The reason why this has some relevance to me is because, as you guys likely know, I released a video fairly recently, three weeks ago, where uh, it was titled, After 10 Years, The Game Theorists Still Don't Understand GT5 Story, where I criticized Matt Pat's and The Game Theorists most recent video about GTA 6, where they gave a very poor summary, an incorrect summary of GTA 5 Story. I'm sure that most people are joking when they say that I inspired Matt Pat to quit, because The Game Theorists have always been criticized for less than diligent dedication to facts. <laughs> To put it in a, in a kind way, even I who don't follow them that closely have heard claims that they're more interested in telling an interesting story than they are having every detail exactly perfect. That isn't to say that they don't care about what's true at all, but what I mean is they've been criticized for the similar things that I criticized them for before. That they got something wrong. There's no way Matt Pass like, oh my god, this is the first time I've ever got something wrong in the entire history of my life. I'm quitting. I mean, maybe I was uh, in some small way a contributor to this, where maybe he's like, you know what? I've done this long enough. And the more and more I, 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 I take my hands off what's being put on the channel, the more and more I'm potentially to blame for not picking up something being incorrect. And maybe I'm going to back out. But I sincerely doubt that I was a significant contributor to him retiring, right? What I did say, though, was this on Twitter. MatPat is quitting? Why not any of the other creators I've criticized? It should have been them, not him. And this is a clip from Yu-Gi-Oh. Ah! It should have been me, not him. It's not fair. Exactly, out of all the cr creators I've criticized, why Matt Pat? He's like one of the only decent people that I've ever criticized. Yeah, so I don't think this is a, a good thing that he's uh, retiring or whatever, except that, you know, it's it's his life, and I'm sure he'll move on to uh, relaxing and maybe doing other cool stuff. I wish him the best. So I tweeted out a very important announcement, as you do. Announcement. Seeing many creators retire has made me question if this is still something I want to do. After much thought, I have decided to retire from making posts suggesting I'm retiring when I'm not. We had a good run, but I've done all I need to. I think it's for the best. I don't think it has as much of an impact when I read it in Rambles video, because obviously I'm not retiring. But reading that, I think is great bait. I think it's wonderful. I tweeted that, and I laughed my head off. And I had some follow-up stuff too. For example, I changed my bio to retired from pretending to retire. And I want to tweet out a picture of my bio change, as I have many times, it's my, my, my running gag. But doing that will give away that the other post isn't real. And so I, I, I feel like my hands are tied. <laughs> Blood thinks he's funny? I think that, because I am. Yeah, I ain't going anywhere. Unless it's for health reasons, I will continue to stream and make content for the rest of goddamn time. I'll be dead, and I'll put like a live streaming camera in my coffin. Sean Fontino, Franklin's voice actor, doesn't know who I am. I've been meaning to retweet this, and I think I will later. Sean Fontino was asked if he knew who I was. Do you know who Dark Viper AU is? And also, what type of music do you like? No, I don't know who Dark Viper AU is. I really don't. They must be somebody real important, but... Um... <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. I mean, you may not know who I am, but uh, he, could, he could definitely pick up on my important status. <laughs> Honestly, we do follow each other on Twitter. It's entirely possible that he doesn't remember who I am, or he's doing a similar thing to Ned Luke, and Ned would frequently be like, who the fuck is Dark Vapor AU? Even though he totally knew who I was. So maybe Sean's like, I don't know who he is either. <laughs> it's just the popular thing to not know Dark Vapor AU. I was meaning to do a, a joke with, with this. Uh, let, me, let me see here. Um... And this guy was meant to be Simeon's employee of the month. No wonder he doesn't get bitches on his dick. <laughs> it is definitely more than his 
ये ये आस है कार What what other memes are there? What other memes are there than this? Sure, I'll just end on it. Tanisha was right. Yeah, I'll do. Are you so uh, Sean Fontino? If you don't know Franklin's voice actor, he is currently doing a playthrough through uh, GTA V. I'm not sure when this will come out in Rambles, but he'll probably still be going through because this is a fairly long game. And uh, if you want to check out his YouTube channel and check out him going through that, feel free. I'm sure it'll pop up on screen somewhere in Rambles. I wonder if Sean and Ned will eventually just start doing um, duo heists in GTA Online or something. <laughs> I added to my retiring from pretending to retire post. I changed to my bio, retired from pretending to retire. Following Sean Fontino saying that uh, I must be someone very important, I changed my bio to say somebody really important. <laughs> and I tweeted that out. Facts. Gaming has grown massively during the past decade. I found this graph interesting. Alex Koshelkov tweeted this out. A total of 14,531 games were released on Steam in 2023. That's almost two games per hour every single day. Imagine releasing your games back in 2013 when only 301 games were released throughout the entire year. Times are different. Game dev friends. I think this just showcases how everything related to gaming has continued to massively blossom over the years. This sort of graph mimics the amount of people live streaming or, or watching Twitch for example. It's just insane how over 10 years, how much things have grown. And like he says here, yeah, imagine releasing a game when there were only 301 games on Steam, but obviously back in 2012, there would be a lot less people using Steam as well. Actually, I'm curious to see those numbers. Well, this only goes back to 2015, but in 2015, there were 8.4 million people playing concurrently compared to in 2024, there's 31 million people playing concurrently. So almost four times as many would be even more if we went back to 2012. So there's more people playing games than ever before. With that being said though, that doesn't necessarily mean that they all propagate to the lower ends of things. L like, um, it isn't as though because there's more people playing that all games get an equal distribution of the players on the platform. People still pull up the top at the very big games and it's hard to get noticed down the bottom. It's always the debatable thing whether it's better to be in a smaller pool with less competition or a larger pool with more competition. Were you more likely to get a significant amount of sales that could sustain your game and a significant player base back here when there was only 301 games or over here where there's 14,000 games, but four or five times as many people actually playing. And who knows? Probably depends on your game, right? But I, I just found this graph fascinating. So many people making games, trying to find enough players to support themselves so they can make the next one. And of course, they live their lives. Uh, I wish them all the best of luck. Nowadays, there's more crappy games. Back then, I reckon games were much more polished on release. It's possible that back then Steam like handpicked what games were put onto the platform. It is possible that this jump from 2013 to 2014 of four times was because it was now a more automated process that people could put on their games without direct oversight from people from uh, Steam. Who's to say? Like obviously that change must have happened at some point, but I can't point and say exactly when that would have occurred. Like I know Steam had its green lights system at one point that was said to just throw up massive amounts of like asset flips or just, just complete garbage, barely working games. But that has been tuned a bit more over the years as well. I'm not an expert in these things, but you're right that that would be a change that happened at some point in the history. I followed someone on Twitter, then they stole my content. So this was a weird interaction I recently had on Twitter and I kind of went pretty hard at this and uh, I don't think everyone appreciate how hard I went. So this dude named Nick Tech tweeted out, GT5 had this disturbing cut content which shows Michael killing the janitor in the mission cleaning out the bureau. And of course, it was just a rip of my footage where I, I ran this cutscene. And it's very obvious that it's my footage because running the cutscene yourself, as hard as that is to do, this also in a cutscene, it doesn't come with any sound. So I can immediately tell if someone has stolen my clip and just reposted it because they use my sounds the sounds that I painstakingly made over a couple of hours. And so I said to this, fun fact, not only is this cutscene hard to play, but it comes with no audio. So if you want audio, you have to painstakingly cobble together sound effects for every small detail. Source, I made this clip, fuck you. It turns out Nick Tech is one of those Twitter accounts that scrounges around Twitter for anything anyone else is posting and then just grabs that shit and reposts it themselves. Doesn't credit anything. It's just one of those content aggregation Twitters. I didn't know this when I very recently followed him. And I followed him because I had referenced him once or twice in Rambles where he had made claims and I've said, no, I disagree with this or I agree with this and all that jazz. You can see here when I followed him, he's like, someone wake me up, am I dreaming? 
saying, because I followed him, and I said, bro couldn't even last a week, and I unfollowed him. He apologized and said, hey, Dark Viper AU, I just wanted to say I'm very sorry for not giving credit for your find. I deleted the video that I have posted, and that was a full mistake on my part. I will use this as a reminder to be more careful for what I post in the future. The dude posts like 20 tweets a day. To this I said, People that believe giving credit absolves content aggregators of wrongdoing are brain dead. If you build off or put a spin on something, all power to you. If you are just reposting something someone else has made, fuck off. You don't need to repost to inform people of another's work. Like if he had some additional commentary on the clip or he used the clip in some creative way to change his purpose or something, like my standards for that kind of stuff are very low. But if what you're doing is just, hey, here's someone else's clip, please like, follow and retweet, Fuck off, right? Especially when it comes to clips, you don't need to be doing much with it for me to give you a pass. I just don't like straight rips of my content. People make memes about my stuff all the time, or people use clips of my stuff all the time, but as long as they're using it in some creative way for some particular purpose that isn't, hey, here's something else that Dark Viper EU has made, I, I, I don't care. What's especially funny is this interaction. This interaction of Nick Tech calling out Drum Alert for taking his engagement farming tactic is particularly funny now. So Nick Tech here says, what excites you most about GTA 6? And then he has an image here. And Drama Alert's like, GTA 6, what are you most excited for? And has the same image. Because Drama Alert does the same thing that Nick Tech does. Bullshit engagement farming posts like 20 times a day. What's funny is I didn't know his account was this way when I followed him. And when I followed him, I immediately regretted it because I, in my follower page, started to get like just the 20 things he had posted every day. But because he was so happy that I followed him, I was like, well, I can never unfollow this guy now. Like ever. I guess I got to mute him. But it's funny that this interaction gave me an excuse to unfollow him so I don't get spammed by the shit that he posts every day. Other people in the replies came out with responses explaining other gripes that they have with Nick Tech and his content aggregation or whatever. But me calling people like brain dead here for thinking credit is good, like, you know, I got to stop being so harsh in my statements about stuff. So I guess there goes the weak, long Nick Tech chapter. Straight up honesty and harshness for wrongdoing is who you are, don't fret. That may be true, but it's not always the most productive way to communicate. Shipping expenses are absolutely insane. One thing I was interested in getting is a rowing machine. Seemed like a good way to exercise, like exercise your like entire body and stuff. But really good ones of these that use magnets as opposed to water or air are super expensive. Worse than that though, I don't know what it is with these companies that make exercise equipment, they don't like coming to Australia. There is always like lower quality knockoff ones in this country or like the lower tier, more mass produced exercise equipment. And so like this, I wanted to get this one specifically, but the only way to get it is from the US. And because this website doesn't actually have the item, it would cost $4,300 for me to get it, just the item. And then like an initial $4,000 to get it sent here from America. Cause the item is very heavy and it needs like a lot of money to go through customs and stuff. And that's like the only way to get it. If the item was actually available here in stores, it'd be worth like one third the price. But because I need to get it from America, it costs like $10,000. And I refuse to spend that much money on an exercise bike or an exercise rowing thing. 4K for shipping, exactly. It's just really, really heavy. It seems as though the heavier and larger the item you want to get shipped from overseas, the more expensive it is. So like if you want to specialty ship a car, from another country. That's like five to $10,000 or some shit. You know, that kind of thing, you know? It just seems like a huge ripoff. I emailed them and I'm like, hey, can you like actually sell your goods in Australia, please, so I can give you money? And they were like, ah, maybe one day, you know? I suspect this must be how it is for a lot of countries, right? Like, Austra there's no way Australia has it the worst. I'm sure many of you are like, man, all the goddamn time, I want to get X product and it's not available in my country. Being in Australia is like a 70% of the time we have the product or whatever, and 30% no. On the list of additional country uh, countries that American companies expand into, we're like reasonably high up there. We're in the, like the top 10. Dude, I want a crazy home sound system and America has all the awesome stuff. It costs huge money to get here. Exactly. It's often, especially the case with like specialty pro uh, products where you can tell that only a small portion of people want to buy that product. So it's just not worth it to sell it in smaller countries because there's just not enough volume that's going to be pushed. With more, well, cheaper products, smaller products, whatever, that more likely be purchased by a lot of people, it's it's more often worth coming or, or selling them in other countries. But the second you want that high-end device, it's just like, we're not sending it over there. What are you fucking crazy? But normally, at least, it's not like $4,000 to get the device from the other country to Australia. 
Because normally it's like a, a normal size pull-ups, but god damn it. People unjustly bullied this redditor. It was weird to me how much support and how many likes this tweet got. From some troll Twitter account called Dirk Fuckner, he tweeted out, The understanding of cooking that redditors have is incredible, and he screen captured a reddit post from r slash cooking, which said, what is the secret ingredient for restaurant style burgers? I want to take my burgers to the next level. Should I add oregano seasoning? I normally only use salt and pepper. I'm wondering if oregano seasoning would be a good option or should I not worry about that? And this had 16,000 likes. This person just shitting on this guy who was doing nothing more than asking a subreddit designed to help people with cooking. Hey, how do I make my cooking better? And then there were a lot of Responses like being positive towards the person reposting this, uh, being critical of this dude, mocking this guy for just wanting to improve his food. And so I said to this, being ignorant is unavoidable. It is a constant part of life. Mocking people making a good faith effort to improve is just about the most pathetic thing you can do. Screams of insecurity. It's second only to seeing one person do something and extrapolating it to an entire group. In that, that this guy saw one guy who didn't know everything about cooking. And apparently that means all Redditors don't know how to cook which is just stupid. Like it's one thing to mock people who are ignorance and arrogance in the same way that I mocked um, the game theorist when he's like, oh man, I can tell the entire plot, the entire lore of GTA 6 based on the trailer. And yet he was unable to tell the plot of GTA 5, despite being a lore expert and being in a situation where making that video, there should have been some research done and he should have made such errors. That's one thing, right? You're, you're mocking a person who should know better or who is acting as if they know better when they don't. But this person isn't doing something like that. They are on a subreddit specifically designed for people who don't know anything about cooking to ask questions about cooking. They're in the exact spot, not claiming to be an expert, not acting arrogantly, not necessarily in a position where they should have this knowledge, where they're just like, hey, I don't know this. Can you help me out? And that is a situation all of us are in at some point. All of us are ignorant of things that we would like to know or potentially also should know. And I just don't think mocking people for being in that circumstance is, is fair or nice. Yeah, so as I say, I, I, I just don't think it was a good thing to mock this dude. It's like hanging out in a classroom and waiting for a student to ask a question so you can report them to the world for trying to learn. <laughs> Look at this guy in a fucking classroom, not knowing literally everything that we teach in this class already. Insane. Making a giveaway is more complicated than I thought. So for those who missed it, I'm doing another giveaway. I was meant to do a giveaway for Christmas, then New Year's, but of course I missed both. So better late than never. Giving away 5,000 USD, best of luck. You might question why I'm doing 5,000 USD and I did 10,000 USD last time. With giveaways, especially when you do them globally, there's always the concern in regards to legality of whether or not what you're doing conforms to the legal guidelines of every single country on the goddamn planet. So when I am aware of a law that I think I might be violating, I try and like step away from that, even though the odds of repercussions are next to zero. In my state, in my country, you're meant to have a license if you want to give away more than $10,000 in a giveaway, right? When I did my giveaway before, you know, because I think in USD, because that's what I get paid in, and that's you got most of you guys are American. I just did it for 10,000 USD. And I was like, oh, wait a second. It's 10,000 AUD, not 10,000 USD. So I was technically over that. I, I'm sure the fine would probably be like $200 or, or, or something, whatever. But I'm just like, look, if I'm going to do another giveaway, I'll just keep it under that 10,000 limit. Unless it's like a real special occasion or something, and then I'll just, I'll risk that the police are going to bang down my door and be like, give us the money for the license. May I just look into getting a license? I, I, I don't know, but for the time being, I'm just going to keep it under, under 10,000. Yeah, so enter if you want to, and uh, that's cool. A sneak peek at my new stream intro. Would you guys like to see an early example of what my intro is going to look like? This is what it looks like. I am not going to be here anymore. We'll put like Woofle and the Cougar somewhere down here. Oh, this compares to my one I've got now. Because I want to be able to put chat on one of the screens. It's just in the way the intro currently is, it doesn't fit. The screens are too small. So we're going to have one screen that's going to have the text to speech dude on it. One screen that's going to have like my most recent video thumbnail on it. And this one is going to be chat. But it needs to be like pretty big or it's not worth it. I guess we need to find a way to fit the other stuff that used to be in the kitchen over here as well. I'm not going to be there. You don't like it. I mean, I don't think I'm really, I'm really suited for the intro. It's a work in progress. We'll work on it. We'll continue to add more and more stuff. No, the snow will be in this window. It won't be on these screens. It, the only reason it's on the screens and the intro is because the screens are too small to be useful. I think this screen needs to be even bigger. But at that point, it may look weird because the wall, I don't know. But um, 
We're just going to keep adding stuff until it looks good. My new intro will look even better if you like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I wish you all the best.